Here we go. Welcome, everybody, to another Big Ideas. I am your host, Dr. Jeffrey Hanna, where we have a look at a few of the important things that can go on with a person's health that people don't understand, really, just because nobody's ever taken the time to really explain what is going on. And today I want to share the, the case of a 20-year-old who had basically come to us because they'd been experiencing headaches for a terribly long time. Headaches, migraines, basically it was just a question of how severe for, you know, certainly 10 years. And this person had been around the block. So they'd been to their general practitioner. They'd been to their chiropractor. They'd been to the acupuncturist. They'd been to the massage therapist. And yes, they could get relief for around a week. That was really it. And so they were just sort of going around chasing their tail, just sort of managing their symptoms. They come to us and we have a, a little bit more of a, an in-depth look. And that's what I want to share with you in this particular video here, what we found and what those implications are for people who experience these kinds of darn near daily headaches. Now, just a couple of things so that you know everybody out there knows where I come from on the subject. First and foremost, unless you're going through a detox process, there is no such thing as a normal headache. To illustrate the silliness of it to a certain degree, if you would, you know, if a person experiences a low back pain or a sciatica, which is like a, a pinching or an irritation, radiating nerve down into your leg, if it's severe enough, a person is thinking, oh my gosh, am I going to need surgery? And yet a headache which in reality is irritation, inflammation of either the connective tissue around your brain or of the nerves that go to and supply your brain. Either way, something is wrong with the nerves in your brain. We think take two aspirin and just carry on. That's a big problem. Headaches are a sign that your brain is not functioning. You are not healthy. It is not just a pain issue that we can just sort of mask up. It's something is not right and we've got to figure out what the root cause is. Now on that note, I also add here, I am always fascinated in identifying root cause for people, not simply treating, this, uh, treating the effects. And in that, we can get very, very good at playing the diagnosis game. Yes, you experience a tension headache, a suboccipital headache, a migraine, a classical migraine, an atypical classical migraine, a migraine with aura, a migraine without aura, vestibular migraine. You get the idea. You can put any number of different labels that you want on the combination of different effects. What is causing it? Is it simply stress, which I very often don't agree with, because if that was the case, every person who has stress in their life experiences headaches or migraines. That's not a true statement. So it's more likely that stress is the factor that aggravates the pre-existing condition that in turn produces the headache or the migraine. Same thing goes oftentimes with chemical sensitivities. Now, yes, if you are detoxing or you have something along the lines of a uh, self-induced headache that is something along the lines of a hangover yes that's going to be you know going to be slightly different category but no most likely what we are talking about when it comes to headaches migraines is a physical origin that is aggravated by chemical change be it something you ate something you drank hormone fluctuation in your body or stress so what we're looking at first and foremost is, are there underlying physical issues that are relating to headaches? And in particular, we are interested in the joints of the neck. Why is that? It's because those joints have a direct and indirect influence on the muscles, ligaments, and nerves that supply all of these areas on the back of your neck, on your head, and also on your brain itself. So bearing all of that sort of stuff in mind, I'll give you just a little bit of backstory for this person. So again, this person, and I'm saying this, you know, so I'm not giving away, you know, sex one way or another, trying to keep everything as anonymous as we can here. This person had come to us on a referral 
because again, they've been having headaches, migraines for well over 10 years. And again, only 20 years old. And so they were currently at university and it was just getting to the point where not able to focus at all. Again, they'd been to their primary care provider, they'd been to their physical therapist, they'd been to the chiropractor, they'd been to their acupuncturist, they'd been doing all of the stuff that you would think of, but it was only, this person was only getting relief for the better part of a week. And so what we did is we did an initial examination as we always would, and we came to the conclusion, all right, yeah, something is wrong with this person's neck. The question then is, what is it? And so what we did then is we had a look on the inside and I'm going to show you a few things on this person's images in terms of what we found and what that ultimately gave us the information about what we needed to do to help them out. So what are you looking at here? These are what are called lateral x-rays. In brief, what we're doing is we're looking at a person's neck from the side. And so we're going to have skull up here. Is going to be their teeth so eyes will be over here and then this is the overall curve of the neck and so what we're looking at are going to be the health of the bones the health of the joints of the discs and also of the overall curve in a person's neck which is a reflection of the amount of tension that's on their muscles and their ligaments and so this one here it's not completely perfect but, you know, maybe with this one exception of some wear and tear really right through here, what we see here is we see no misshapen stuff through the bones. We see no growth abnormalities through the discs, like degenerative arthritis or wear and tear. And we see a nice reversed C-shaped curve like this. So, pretty good overall. And this one here was the image that came back for this person who we started to see. Now, they had actually had previous diagnostic scans. Again, they've been having headaches and migraines for 10 years. And their report came back as saying normal. How do I know that? Because I looked at what the report said. And the report said everything is normal. And unfortunately, this is a very, very common problem for a lot of people who experience a lot of different conditions, be it headaches, migraines, vertigo, dizziness, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, different other forms of neuralgia, even low back pain sciatica, you get the idea. Why is that? It's because, and I don't blame them for this, but it's a matter of perspective. You see, when the traditionally trained medical radiologists are looking at images, what are they looking for? They're looking for broken bones, dislocations, lesions that will kill you, such as bleeding, tumors, infections, things like that, and also arthritis. However, these things typically don't show up until you've got the better part of, you know, 50 to 70 percent worth of structural damage. And so what happens is, is we'll have a look at these things and say, oh, we don't see these growth signs of damage. In other words, like you're looking at a, a car. Well, the car's not completely totaled and there might be a couple little scratches on it, but it's quote unquote normal. And that's the problem. That's the issue that I have. The, the word normal in that regard. It can be we are not seeing signs of pathology from these certain views. And that's a true statement. Um, but just because a person's views may be coming back as normal does not necessarily mean that everything is actually in the clear. What it means is that we oftentimes have to do a more detailed investigation. And so why did we take this picture for this person in the first place? Well, we did that because again, our examination was showing, yeah, something is not right in your neck. And so we took this view here just to get a general lay of the land. And sure enough, even as a 20-year-old, we didn't see all horrible amounts of horrific degenerative damage, which is good. Unfortunately, we do see that increasingly common even in 20-year-olds. Why is that? It's because of our computers. It's because of our tablets. It's because of our phones. All of these mobile devices coupled with the physical injuries that we experience as kids. So slips, falls, bike accidents, sports injuries, car accidents, 
all of these physical forms of stress, even if they don't break anything, they do accumulate. And then when you compound that with technology, that starts to cause a person's neck to degenerate prematurely. And so unfortunately, we're seeing even in 20 year olds problems that we didn't used to see until the person was about 40. Now, one way or another, at least in this person's case, I do not see horrific signs of degenerative damage. And that is honestly a really, really good thing. It means that for whatever this person has going on, they should be getting good results. But again, what's happening? They're only getting relief for about a week at a time. And so that means that we do need to investigate a little bit deeper. Now, the astute observer might have noticed that there is a subtle little difference between this person's x-rays and then this person's textbook normal. And that's this little spicule of bone right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in on it. Nice and big, front and center right there. So what we're looking at is the atlas vertebra, the top vertebra in your neck that supports the weight of your head and balances your head on top of your shoulders in order to modulate the amount of stress and tension on your muscles and nerves everywhere in your body. So this little bit of extra bone here, what are we seeing? It's the formation of what's called a posterior ponticle. Don't worry about the name, but what it represents is it represents where a person's body is under stress and tension. In other words, something's going on in this particular area and it's irritating the vessels that would be located within this little cavity right here. What are these? These are gonna be what are called your suboccipital nerves. They control the muscles that are located right in this area between your head and your top vertebrae and your neck. And it's also gonna be the vertebral artery and vein, which are gonna supply and drain about a third of all of the blood that goes up into your head. And so you can appreciate that if this area was getting squished, uh, that's gonna cause a lot of potential neurological issues and guess what? Headaches can certainly be one of them. In fact, this finding is oftentimes associated with higher incidences of headaches and migraines. So right off the bat, it wasn't reported, but we're seeing signs here that this person's body is actually under some stress and duress of some of those vital arteries, nerves, and veins that surely could be caused you know, in contributing to what she has going on in her headaches. So it means that we need to zero in on this area. Now, there are some who say, oh, geez, if you see something like that, you should never see a chiropractor. I would actually disagree with that statement. No, you do not want somebody being a cowboy that is popping, twisting, cracking the neck willy-nilly without a more detailed proper investigation. You absolutely don't want to be doing that. But when we see changes in the structure like that, it means that something's going on there. And it's probably physical and mechanical in nature. And no, it is not a surgical kind of thing at all. But it does mean, okay, hey, a, a specific correction might be exactly what this person needs. So we're seeing that something is going on through this area and we want to pay attention to that. Now, I'm not going to show you all of this person's x-ray images. Why? Because a good chunk of them ended up being normal, which is, of course, what we want. And this is a good thing. And again, at a quick glance on these films, we really didn't see too terribly much that was wrong. In other words, we agreed with the, the medical radiologists. But we also know that there's more to the story. So every human being, guess what? We look different from everybody else who's out there. We are also different on the outside versus on the inside from us. So with views such as the ones that I've shown you so far, what they show us and what they're good for, as I said, is the broken bones, the arthritis, all of that sort of stuff. They do not take the individualized, customized details to account. And so what we do is we take a few of these initial views first so that we can actually measure how is it that a person's individual joints actually fit together. Are they very steep? Are they very shallow? Do they turn like this? Are they same on the left? Are they different on the right? And we take all of that into consideration so that we can then 
take a few customized views to see what is actually going on on a joint by joint basis so that we can actually give a properly custom tailored solution to the individual and not just presume that because we're not seeing signs of pathology, everything is okay. So that's what we did with this next view that I'm gonna show you here. All right now, so the image that I want you to pay attention to is actually gonna be the image that's on the right side here. So this was the original one that we took. Remember, there's that little pokey spiky bit right there. And so what we did was we changed the angle of our film a little bit here so that we could actually see what is going on on a joint by joint basis through this person's neck. And the way that this image is oriented, these are gonna be essentially the joints along the left side of this person's neck. And then these are the joints along the right side of this person's neck. And you can see hopefully these little black spaces in between. Those are the individual joints. And it doesn't matter whether it's your neck, your low back or your little toe, those joints should be lining up if everything is normal. Now, why did we have to take this particular view in this way? Well, as you can see, when we take it from a stock standard angle, all of those joints overlap. And so if there are very subtle issues here, guess what? We are very likely not going to see them. And what I wanna to draw to your attention to, the problem is located right here. And it's not necessarily obvious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make this quite a bit, quite a bit bigger here, like that. So again, we're looking at this area right here, but it's being obliterated, it's being obscured on the normal view. So again, what do we know about this person's history? They've been having headaches for 10 years. And so when you have bone, muscle, ligament, that has been under tension for a long period of time, what it does is it starts to remodel itself. That's actually what degenerative arthritis is. And I don't know well, how well you can see it, but I'm gonna start with the column that you see right over here. Each of these little black lines represents the individual joint margins. And I think that you would agree with me, uh, yeah, they look like they're all sitting pretty good, stacked relative on top of each other. So the right side, yeah, we're happy there. The left side, okay, we see one of them down there. I just moved it out of the, the shot. We see that, it's a slightly different viewpoint, but yeah, it looks relatively okay. But then there's something peculiar about this little zone right here. Because what you might see is, yeah, you see the black space, but it's almost as if there's like this weird spiky tail on the back located right here. And that was our clue of what the problem was. You see, as we said, if you've got muscle and ligament that's under constant stress and tension, what it does is it starts to degenerate. It starts to make these arthritic changes right here. This is where the body is trying to lay down more bone in order to protect something. And where is it attaching? It's attaching to this little white line here. You might be able to notice that little white line right there. This should normally be that person's joint surface right here. And remember what we said, joints normally should be sitting right on top of each other in terms of um, uh, basically um, pairs, matching pairs. In other words, this should be sitting here. I repeat, this, that part there, should be sitting here. But because their body had laid down extra bone to try to protect and safeguard the area, it doesn't necessarily appear that way. And because it's not broken, because it's not dislocated, nobody had seen it before. And when you look on it on a stock standard view like this, you don't see anything at all. We had to take a customized tailored view in order to actually see what was going on in this person's case. Okay, so let me show you here. This is what they actually had going on. If we're looking from the back, and then these are the, the vertebra on that left side here, okay? 
what was happening was this vertebra was pivoting up like this. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing, again, not quite to scale, but where it was misaligning and the body was laying down all of that extra spiky bone to try to protect the area. But the problem then is that's going to start to stretch all those muscles, all those ligaments, all of those nerves that are going up to the head. And we were able to identify, okay, this is exactly where the problem is coming from. And what we did then is we realized, okay, well, if that has basically gotten entrapped up like that, we need to come at it the other way. And the reason that that is important and why this message, I hope, gets out to the people who have already been to a lot of manual therapists, be it a chiropractor, be it a physical therapist, be it a massage therapist, the vast majority of those methods, see, what they do is if we are working back to front, in other words, we're trying to apply pressure along the areas on the back in order to release trigger points, to get the joints moving, all of that sort of stuff. But if, and I think you'll appreciate this, if that thing has actually gotten locked forward, and that's the more common configuration based on some research we've done, it means that if you push it from back to front, it's only going to get worse. You have to then take it from a different angle front to back, and that oftentimes is able to solve what the underlying issue is. That is one of the, the biggest things that we do that's so terribly different in the Blair upper cervical world. A lot of times people say, oh, I've already been to the chiropractor, that didn't work for me. Well, that's like saying that you tried on a pair of clothes once, they didn't fit, and so you gave up wearing pants. That doesn't make sense. There are over 40 different mainstream chiropractic methodologies. And the one that we use is the one that is designed specifically for people when they have chronic head, neck, jaw, balance kinds of disorders, where we take that customized approach. And by doing that, we're oftentimes able to find those things that a lot of the, the general procedures simply put aren't. And so right off the bat, we had a plan to be able to start working with this person and help them out. And what did we find? We found in the beginning that not only by doing that different kind of correction were they able to go well over a week, they held their very first correction for over two weeks. And that was when they were going to university and that was the longest relief that they had gotten in 10 years. And that was very early, early on in their care. We ultimately got to the point when we were working with them where their alignment was stable. I think it was the better part of around uh, two to three months. And yeah, still did have a few low-grade headaches. Why would you expect that? Well, they were still studying for one. But number two, and so you can appreciate looking down, that's going to aggravate that. But you remember that big giant white spike? That doesn't disappear overnight. And so because the body needs to remodel itself over a period of time, what that means is that means it needs to disappear over a period of time to where things can ultimately strengthen and stabilize even better. But blah, 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 point being, by making that subtle little correction, that was what was able to make all of the difference to be able to help this person out. So I hope that, you know, by doing this kind of video right here, it's going to help people out, you know, number one for headaches and migraines, a, a lot of different possibilities. Number one is showing you what is possible. Number two, breaking that myth that headaches, migraines are normal. Number three, that just because your images came out as looking as being normal does not necessarily mean that it's normal. It means deeper investigation, a precise investigation to find out what's unique for your, your anatomy, your genetics, your unique misalignment. That's what we need to figure out in order to know what's actually appropriate for you. And then, of course, last but not least, is the importance of recognizing that the, the nature of the kind of work that we do in the upper cervical world is different, very, very different from people or what people think of as general chiropractic. And so in this video, I hope that that gives you maybe not answers yet, 
but it gives you hope and possibility that things can improve, that you can start having a better quality of life, doing, enjoying the kinds of things that you do, and that headaches, migraines are not necessarily something that you just have to learn to live with. So I hope you have enjoyed this video out there. If you have, please do like and subscribe to the channel so that you get all kinds of different video contents like this. And please do also share this one with friends, family who need this information as well. Again, it's only by sharing this is it actually going to make a difference in proving and helping people live a better quality of life. And last but not least, number three, we'd have you go to our website, which is drjeffreyhanna.com, where you can get in touch with me personally. I'm always looking for topics of interest to be able to do videos like this. And if you'd like more information about the particular work that we do and how we might be able to help you, we're located at Clear Chiropractic in Spokane, Washington. You can reach out to us for a consultation, 509-315-8166. Certainly always a pleasure to work with you, to help you out. And person by person, work on changing, improving quality lives for people around the world. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Clear Chiropractic. Get well, live well, stay well. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.